Super excited to just give you a really great overview about the area, whether you're looking to relocate, um, buy a second home or an investment property in the area. All right, so again, this is for you. If you are one of those three categories, we're gonna cover um, lifestyle, um, the different housing options and um, all the different area choices that you have within the South Southwest Florida region. I'm also going to talk about um, different types of homes that you might want to consider and the different types of communities that those homes are found within um, and tips for how you can search for those homes online, as well as with my concierge service. Um, financial considerations. This is a big one, um, especially, you know, these big moves. There's lots of different hidden fees. And so we're going to talk about some of the benefits of Florida living and where you might be able to save some money based off of where you're currently coming from um, versus um, other expenses that you might not necessarily foresee just so you're prepared. And then of course, we'll wrap it up with the next steps where we go from here if you are interested in pursuing this any further. So before we get into it too much, I wanted to introduce myself. Um, my name is Kelly Olin and I am a, a I'm a Michigan native, born and raised in Rochester, Michigan, went to Michigan State University. Um, and actually, I started my career out of um, college working for Pulte Homes as an on-site sales consultant. So I have a background in new construction, um, but flash forward to 2020, my family of five there that you see on the screen, we decided to make a big move. Actually, my parents started this. Um, they had been snowboarding down in the Naples area for many years. And when COVID hit, they said, Kelly, we're we're going down for good. <laughs> and so I started helping them find a place in the area. And I was looking online going, hey, hon, we should probably consider this too. It's looking pretty good right now. And so we re relocated our family of five down here in 2020 um, and never looked back. Um, I was actually just chatting with Jenny and uh, love Michigan, um, love that that fall weather and everything like that. Um, just just there last weekend, um, enjoying a hockey tournament with my son. Um, but you know, we love the Southwest Florida lifestyle year round, um, and are full timers here now. Now, um, I am a local realtor here. I also lead a team of agents with the community by EXP Realty, and I help clients both on the residential and on the commercial side. So I have kind of a, a well-rounded approach there, and I really bring in a lot of my background in new construction and really, really focus on helping um, um, out-of-state relocation buyers. Those are my favorite buyers to work with, um, to orient them to the area, and just help them find their kind of their new normal in this in this area something I really wish that I would have had coming down. Um, I kind of bring all that personal experience into it as well. Um, I'm also a local business owner. Um, my uh, husband and I, with our business partners, we're actually investors in a restaurant that's going to be opening in downtown Vanity Springs in January. Um, and we're also real estate investors. We've invested in a couple different rental properties over the last couple of years here locally. And so I can share both from a professional and a personal um, uh, perspective about owning and, um, and renting out properties here uh, as well. So we'll, we'll get right into it with that. So where is Southwest Florida? And I do not, uh, or I apologize, I do not mean to insult anybody if you're not familiar with this space, but I wanted to be clear that Southwest Florida is actually south of the Tampa Bay area. A lot of times people think Tampa, Sarasota is Southwest Florida. They're actually not considered, they would be more of like the Central West area. Southwest Florida is further on south there. I really describe it as from Cape Coral, Punta Gorda area, all the way down to Marco Island. So um, here's kind of a, a, a more in-depth focus focused area on where Southwest Florida is. And this is the area in which I serve um, and that we're going to primarily focus on during today's webinar. However, if you are looking outside of this area, I'd be happy to refer you to um, an agent that specializes in that area. It's just not my area of expertise. And um, I would want to make sure that you're in the best hands possible for the most local expertise in those areas. So I'd be happy to, to um, connect you with somebody who might be interested in that area. So just shoot me a message after this webinar, and I'd be happy to connect you with somebody in a different space. But we're going to talk today primarily about Naples, Bonita Springs, Estero, and Fort Myers, but I'll definitely tie in some insight about Marco Island, Sanibel Island, and the Cape Coral markets as well. So we're going to kind of start from the bottom here at Naples and work our way up and talk about each of the areas and the housing options that you have within those areas. 
So we'll start with Naples and Naples is located in Collier County. Pretty much all of Collier County is Naples and, and Marco Island. Um, here on the map, you'll see kind of a, a, a zoomed in um, uh, area map of Naples, but Naples is actually even larger than this. If you took this map and kept going out pretty much the same size all the way out to the right further, Naples expands very far inland, um, almost to the effect that you would be surprised that this is still a Naples ad address um, because it does get very rural and there are many um, uh, farm communities in the um, more east Na east Naples area. Here's the Gulf right here and all the way this way. It goes even further on that way. And that's really where a lot of the new developments happening as well, um, where the builders can get land and they are growing. But the average sales price of a single family home in Naples is $1.269 million. Um, it is on the higher end, and that's just the average. I mean, we have homes down here in Port Royal in this region. This is probably the most expensive area of, of um, Naples here that are going for tens of millions of dollars. Um, and um, all throughout this area is the most expensive area, of course, kind of um, hinged on um, uh, Fifth Avenue right through here as well. Um, Fifth Avenue is the downtown area of Naples. Everyone wants to be close to Fifth Avenue um, unless you have multiple millions of dollars to to, um, to invest. It's really tough to get a single family home in that area. Um, and as you go north and as you go east, things get less expensive. So as you go away from the water, um, all of these areas here were developed, you know, um, several years ago. Um, there's not a lot of land here. You're not going to see a lot of new construction or any new construction communities in this area. But as you go north and as you go east here, that's where some of the land opens up and you'll see more opportunities. You'll also see newer homes, homes that are more updated um, because they were built more recently. Um, you know, down in the heart of Naples, you're going to have more um, uh, renovations and things that you're going to need to do. And you're definitely going to pay the price point for that. Now, the average uh, sales price of a condo is $752,000. So if you're looking to be in Naples and still close to the water, there are still several condo options throughout um, uh, this area that will still keep you under a million dollars. There's the beachfront condos here, but you'll notice there's all these little canals that go through here, even here on Gulf Shore Boulevard. Um, on one side of the road, you're on um, the beach side. On the other side of the road, you're along this waterfront right here. This is actually where my parents live in a condo. Um, and there are still options there under a million dollars where you can have waterfront um, views of the intercoastal area. You can see the dolphins going through there as well. Um, and then um, on, you just walk across the street and you have the beach. So there are options all throughout here for that as well. Um, North Naples is, is um, a more developing area of Naples where they have um, the Mercado. I'll show you that picture there in a second. Um, but really, well, again, most of the new construction development is happening here along Immokalee Road. This is a very popular corridor here. I don't know if you've heard of Seed to Table. It's a really a kind of farm to table. Local farmer um, and businessman owns that. <clears throat> It's a um, hot spot. Um, it's like the biggest, most amazing grocery store you can ever think of. That's right here. Um, and then all the way down this Immokalee corridor, there are a lot of new construction communities, um, many of which they've, um, there's, they, they're old quarries. Um, so they've dug up and they have beautiful large lakes and Lynn lakes throughout there too. So that's a very popular corridor for a lot of people relocating the area. And there are some many new construction options all along Immokalee Road going as far east all the way out to Ave Maria as well. So that's a kind of a, 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 a overview of Naples in general in terms of the geography. But here are some of the, the things that people really look forward to um, living in Naples. Of course, there's the Fifth Avenue shopping district that I talked about, shopping, dining. There's also Third as well that um, has luxury designers, boutiques, and some really fun restaurants. Um, there's Tin City in Venetian Bay. Um, Venetian Bay is kind of along that area that I meant that I was pointing out where you can kind of be on the intercoastal side. Tin City is just a little bit south of, um, of Fifth Avenue um, and Tin City has some great restaurants and water on the waterfront. Um, uh, the community parks in Collier County are fantastic. They're like 
water parks and have amazing sports fields, things I've never seen before in a public park setting. Um, so those are really nice. And those are, um, there's several of them throughout um, Collier County or Naples that you can enjoy as residents of Naples. You can attend them if you're not um, a resident, but you have to pay. Um, but um, they're really uh, intended for um, uh, residents of Naples. Of course, there's the iconic pier in Naples, um, right near Fifth Avenue, and the gorgeous beaches all along the coast there. Um, it's just some absolutely stunning sunsets that we have um, all throughout the coast. That's something we're known for here on the West Coast is the beautiful sunsets. The Mercado is a newer development. Um, it is its own little kind of downtown, um, like a newer downtown feel um, with shops and restaurants, um, I have ice cream, um, tacos and tequila, all the fun things, even a movie theater. It's really designed to kind of feel like a little mini downtown, but it's located in North Naples. Um, and then if you are a pickleball fan, we have lots of pickleball. We are kind of like the Mecca for pickleball um, here in Naples. And we host every year the um, U.S. Open Pickleball Championship. And that's also located in Naples as well. I wanted to mention one more thing. A hot area of Naples that's developing is the South east area of Naples here, just south and east of the downtown. What's nice about this area, it was a little bit more industrial, but it's really developing. You can still get condos in this area in the 300,000s, but you're still very close to the beach. You're close to downtown to Fifth Avenue. Um, they're putting in, um, there is a um, already a, a waterfront um, food truck, uh, uh, it's called Celebration Park. It's a food truck park in that area that's very hip. Um, there also are some non-HOA um, communities that have walkable streets up into that area. There are um, <clears throat> There's a brewery that's going in there, some really chic wine bars and things like that. So um, that's a really interesting area right now of Naples. And then as you go south here towards Lely, Lely is known for its incredible golf. There's many gated communities in this area as well. So that's just a kind of a high level overview. A little bit about Naples just to get you familiar with what it has to offer. All right, so the next area I want to talk about is we're moving just north of Naples is Bonita Springs, okay? And Bonita Springs is has kind of two different um, cities that you'll hear hear people say. There's Bonita Springs and there's Bonita Beach. Bonita Beach is really just this um, strip right here along the beach. Pretty much everything else here is going to be um, uh, Bonita Springs. Um, there are some interesting areas that are developing in Bonita Springs, which I'll talk about here in a second, but I um, wanted to point out the average sales price of homes still um, just under a million dollars. We just got under that, that price there. Um, and the condos are around the same as what you would pay on average in, um, in Naples. Um, but there are um, some other options for you here that are a little less expensive than Naples um, in the for new for um, single family homes. Now, as you would expect, as you go east this way down Bonita Beach Road, there are some newer communities here ending in um, Bonita National, which is a golf course community. Um, there are some 55 and up communities throughout here, many golf course communities throughout here. And right here in the center here is a, um, uh, a new district. It's actually, it's I shouldn't say new, it's a historical district called, of downtown Bonita, but it has had a huge infusion of investment. Um, what's great about it is they actually just rezoned this area and they hired the same group of people to work on this that developed um, downtown Naples. And so they've changed some of the zoning to allow for um, for the setbacks to be actually not further back, but further close so that we can have walkable streets, we can have um, restaurants and, and boutiques with um, dining on the on the, um, the sidewalks there. They're limiting traffic so that trucks can't go through there. Um, it's historical with the Shangri-La Hotel and some, some um, historical sites through there. The um, the um, uh, winter gardens are there as well. There's a beautiful park, Riverside Park there. And so there's lots of restaurants and um, um, shops that are going in there. And that's a very hot um, area right now for investors. Um, it's one of the only areas between Naples and downtown Fort Myers where you're going to have that city center. That's an authentic city center and not like a made up mall. Um, and so there are still opportunities there. A lot of the investments 
investors have snatched up the really, really cheap deals in the twos and threes. Um, but there are still opportunities there to get some fixer upper homes in the fours um, and fives. Um, and I think that is going to be a really great area for investment going forward. Just some more historical homes um, that have a lot of potential and walkability to a really cool area. Um, and so I mentioned then down here is where you're going to find more of the newer construction. You will find all along 41. That's kind of a main corridor here as well. Um, you will find um, condos and townhomes um, uh, and some single family home communities too. But there are a lot of condo options along 41, which are very convenient as well. So again, here is Benita Springs. On the left here, you'll see the downtown Benita Springs um, uh, rendering of, of all the different projects that are currently happening. There's a food truck park. Um, there's um, a, a live music venue going in there. Um, all sorts of different restaurants and boutiques all throughout that area. And it is very centrally located. It's at 41 and Old 40. Uh, I'm sorry, it's at Benita Beach and um, where Old 41 hits. And then, of course, Benita Springs is known for its beautiful beaches. The upper right picture here, you'll see this one is right where Dox is on the water. So Dox is a um, popular restaurant. You can get pub there's public parking here and you can access the beautiful beaches. And then all along that strip there on Benita um, Beach, most of the um, on the opposite side of the road, you will find some condos, but most of the waterfront properties there are going to be single family and multi multi million dollars. So um, beachfront property um, is mostly reserved for single family homes in Bonita Beach. All right, Estero. So this is kind of um, a hidden gem. A lot of people are not familiar with Estero. They've heard of Fort Myers and Naples, of course, and maybe Benita Springs, but Estero is a very happening area. It's just north of Benita Springs, because again, we're just moving forward or moving north. Um, Benita Springs is, I'm sorry, Estero has um, average single family homes at 832,000. The average sales price of a condo is 465,000. And it has a lot of the same um, attractions that um, Naples and Fort Myers and, and uh, uh, Benita have. It has some incredible malls. It has the Coconut Point Mall um, with all sorts of shopping and dining and walkable streets, it's kind of an outdoor mall type of a feel. Um, there's Miramar, uh, Miramar Outlets. Um, it's also host to um, Gulf Coast Town Center, which is technically in Fort Myers, but it's really more Estero because it's right on the border there. Um, so there's some really incredible op opportunities for shopping and dining in those three areas. It's also home to um, Gulf Coast State University. Um, so we have the kind of um, uh, a college town feel there as well. Um, Hertz Arena is there, which is host to most of the um, big concerts that come in, any of the big names, that's where they're gonna have their concerts. Um, so lots of fun um, entertainment there. Um, and it's also host to the Florida Everblades. So if you're a hockey fan, like, my family is. Um, it's really fun to to head on up to a, a Everblades game and to see um, uh, everything that is available with those fun games. And they're very affordable um, and just as entertaining as the uh, NHL games, I would say. Um, let's see, Estero River um, kayaking. So if you look at this map here, I don't know if it will actually show, but there is a river that comes through here and you can jump on right at 41 here um, on the uh, Estero River. And you, there are boatable communities throughout here where you can actually live in a community and have a boat and drop that boat into um, the canal here and come all the way out to um to look through Lover's Key to the um, intercoastal area or to the Gulf. Um, also, you can kayak all throughout this area. So if you enjoy kayaking, there's lots of nature. There's um, Ocean National Park there as well. So it, it's really a beautiful area. Um, now um, with Benita and with Estero and Fort Myers, we are now in Lee County. So um, that's a different school system than in um, and then in Collier County, both are fantastic school districts that have wonderful options. Um, and I'd be happy to share any information if you're interested more about the schooling options in these areas. So Estero is actually where I decided to live. And the reason I chose Estero is because um, there's many, many more um, new construction options, specifically along this corkscrew corridor right here, all along this way right here. Many new construction communities through here, and um, you can get a lot more for your um, your buck throughout here and a newer home um, than you can further on south. 
Fort Myers. Okay. So again, moving more north here, this is the Fort Myers, I guess, proper, but really Fort Myers goes all the way out here into Buckingham as well. And all the way down here through um, to, to Alva. So um, Fort Myers has its downtown Fort Myers, but of course you've probably already also heard of Fort Myers beach, which is actually down here to the to the left here. So all of this, even a little bit further south of here is all going to be Fort Myers. It's actually, it's very, very large, but there is an opportunity for more urban living in the um, historical district of downtown Fort Myers. This is where you're going to see the Edison Estates um, and have, you know, beautiful co cobblestone roads. This is where the iconic McGregor corridor or is with lined with um, the Royal Palms. And you really get that kind of old Florida feel. Um, so there are some historical homes available in the downtown Fort Myers area. Um, there's Benita Beach over here and everything you can imagine in between here. Um, there is also, if you go further East here, you're going to get into Buckingham. Buckingham has is more rural. It has larger properties, beautiful horse ranches and things of that nature. And there's a lot of development happening um, in through Buckingham and Alva and even just in north of here up into this area. This is where you're going to find Babcock Ranch, which is a city within a city, or it's it, a new made up city, I should say. Um, what's something that's really unique about Babcock Ranch is um, that it's all solar powered. So um, it was a, an old um, a old ranch that they purchased the, the land and they're, um, they've been developing for about 10 years now and they probably have at least another 10 years to go, but it will be its own city. Um, and it is a very popular area. It's all new construction. I mean, there are, there are resales now there are, of course, but many new construction options. Um, and it's, it's kind of like its own brand new city with its own Publix um, grocery store and shopping and and um, fitness center and all the different things. So that's up in this area. Um, here again, Fort Myers Beach, everyone knows and loves. Um, popular question that I get from people is about the hurricane. Um, Ian, yes, we are still recovering from Hurricane Ian, making progress every single day. Fort Myers is one of the areas in Sanibel that got hit the hardest. Um, so it was pretty devastated. However, a glimmer of hope is in just a couple of months, um, Margaritaville will be opening up in downtown Fort Myers. And that's really going to bring a lot of people back down, um, really drive a lot of commerce in the area and really help um, get things kind of rolling again in that area. So the beaches are open. The water's fine. Um, I rented a boat a couple weeks ago with some friends and went out on the water. So um, you can definitely take advantage of that whole area for recreation. There, um, there's just not as much um, of the um, of the vacation restaurants and the fun stuff that's going on right now because a lot of that is still rebuilding. Um, the historic downtown we already talked about, Sanibel Island is located right off of Fort Myers. So if, um, you know, if you want to, you can live on Sanibel Island. I'm not going to go into that too much today, but um, it's really great to be able to just jump on a boat and head right over to Sanibel Island and spend the day there and then take your boat back um, to Fort Myers or Cape Coral, wherever you're coming from. Um, Fort Myers is also known for its spring training. Um, you can go see a, a, a Red Sox or Minnesota Twins preseason game there. Um, so there are some really fun um, um, opportunities if you are sports fans um, in Fort Myers as well. So for investors, I wanna just point out some of my kind of top picks or hot areas. Um, I mentioned Southeast Naples, that was that kind of up and coming area in this area region right here that I was talking about that was used to be more industrial, but now is really getting a lot of hip things happening here. Northeast Naples, so again, if you're going this way down Immokalee, there are many new construction opportunities there. Um, many investors will actually just purchase a property early in the um, development and then um, rent it out and sell it at the end um, of, or when the, when the community is closing out, when the property values go crazy. And so this is kind of a um, more, or I should say less risky um, opportunity um, if you are kind of just dipping your toe in the water or looking for maybe a second home. These communities are really great um, investment opportunities. I took advantage of that and purchased a product, property about a year ago in um, the, one of the communities actually um, in Benita Springs actually a little bit north of here. 
uh, actually, no, that's Immokalee Street. So right, right through here. Um, and in the last year, we already have $100,000 in equity and we've never paid a mortgage payment because we've rented it out the whole time. So that's a really great opportunity um, in those new construction. And I'd be happy to talk to you guys more about that. Um, downtown Bonita Springs, which um, has all the, the, the development happening is a great area. The Corkscrew Corridor, again, east on um, um, Corkscrew Road through here in Estero. St. Carlos Park. St. Carlos Park is this little area right here. It's it's technically Fort Myers, so you won't actually see St. Carlos Park as like a uh, city name. It's located in Fort Myers. It's on the south side of Fort Myers near Estero. What's nice about it is it's still so close to everything, so close to 75 and 41. It's actually right between 75 and 41, just north, north of Corkscrew Road. Um, you can still get some single family homes on some larger lots there. Um, in the 300s uh, or so, they start in that area. Um, and there's no HOAs there, um, but it is an area that's been very hot for um, uh, entry-level um, buyers um, or um, people that are looking to do fix and flips. There's some really great opportunities there as well. Downtown Fort Myers um, and those beautiful historical homes that need a little TLC, there's some great opportunities in downtown Fort Myers. Elva, um, which again is kind of up in this area over here. Um, Elva is growing like crazy. It's kind of one of the um, last frontiers for um, for land. So um, wherever the 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 um, builders go, you know that there's infrastructure coming as well. And so this is a great area as well. Um, and if you do are looking for um, land, if you want or acreage, then that's a really great area to look in. And then Cape Coral. Cape Coral is this um, area right here, um, just north of Fort Myers. Um, it's right along the water. Cape Coral is consist like it, it's all canals basically. It's almost like Venice. There's just canals everywhere. Tons of waterfront property where you can have a boat and just take that boat right out to um, the the um, the Gulf. Um, um, very affordable living. You can still find homes in the 300s and up, single family homes in 300s and up. Um, if you want to be waterfront, you might be looking more like four to five hundred thousand dollars and up, but great for um, vacation rentals as well. Um, but it did get hit extremely hard during um, Ian, and so you'll find a lot of homes that when you're looking at them on the um, online might not even have drywall. Um, they, you know, the homeowners ran out of money and now they have to sell the house. And so there are still opportunities um, uh, for some fix and flips or even just keeping those as vacation rentals or your own home there in um, Cape Coral as well. The rental market. Okay, so if you are thinking about renting your house, even if you're thinking this is going to be your second home, we have many people that use their home in season, and season here is January through April, um, and they rent their home out the rest of the year. So that's definitely an opportunity, even if this is going to be a second home for you and not a total investment property. But the rental market is very hot here. Um, there are kind of a couple different options that um, you can think about when you're thinking about investing in property. You could um, do an Airbnb style, which, you know, nightly or a couple nights um uh, minimum. Um, but this is not going to be allowed in any kind of homeowner, um, homeowners association restricted community. Most of the HOAs in this area um, that have the resort style amenities, which we'll talk about here in a second, require a minimum of 30 days for the rental. And they are going to um, um, a lot, limit how many tenants you can have per year. Um, I've seen um, a limit of one per year. I've seen a limit of five per year. It really kind of depends on the community. And that's something that I can help you find depending on what you're looking for. But I would say kind of a good average is th minimum 30 days and three tenants per year. And um, so if you are looking for more of an Airbnb style, you want to definitely make sure that you are not looking in um, a, a homeowners association. Short-term furnished is very popular here. Um, what's great about a short-term furnished rental is that you can take advantage of renting it out a few months out of the year, and then you can enjoy it the rest of the year yourself. Um, so many of the HOAs, again, with those restrictions, short-term furnished would be fine. Um, with our rentals, we end up renting them out year-round, but we do do it short-term furnished. So we might have a tenant come in from January through April. Um, and at that time, we can actually charge double the rent. So just to give you guys an idea in Fort Myers, um, in a gated community with a pool and um, a fitness center and all the different amenities that way, um, we are able to get on a two bedroom plus a den, 1600 square foot home, no pool, $7,500 per month. 
January, February, March, and April. And then throughout the rest of the months, May through December, we're looking at between 4,500 and 5,500 a month in rent. Um, and that's turnkey furnished. So we have, we invest about $25,000 in furnishing the home um, after purchasing the home. So there are opportunities for that. Um, but short-term furnished is very popular with all of the development and all of the new construction happening. We have a lot of people that are moving down or want to move down and rent while their home is being built. And so in those new communities, there's built-in clientele. Um, so a lot of people will purchase a home strictly as a rental investment um, just to support the demand for rentals in that community as that the builder is building that out. Long-term, of course, you can do an annual um, rental, an annual rental. You're not going to get the, those high peak season prices. Um, again, you're probably looking at more of the, the, the off-season prices for a short-term rental, and um, they're not expected to be furnished. So if you want a little less, um, hand, if you want more of a hands-off, but a little less ROI, then the um, annual rentals, um, there's definitely still uh, a need for, for annual rentals because um, uh, it is so expensive to live here, <laughs> or there it, the um, uh, affordable housing is 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 difficult to find, and so there are still a lot of rentals renters that are looking in the area. And then we talked a lot about already new construction that um, you don't have to you know. Uh, you can buy a, a rental property, new construction um, community, and that's actually something that I highly recommend. Um, you're not going to have all of the issues um, with, um, you know, with things breaking and pipes bursting and things like that. Um, everything kind of falls under your warranty. And so it, it gives you a lot more security that way as well. All right. So community options. Um, here in Southwest Florida, we we know how to live like we're on vacation, <laughs> and the resorts, um, the, the the resort, the amenities that are here are like nicer than any other hotel that I've ever been to. For example, they have uh, spas on site, they have pools, they have fitness centers. Um, uh, the one that you're looking at right here, this one actually has a water slide and a lagoon. So literally, if you are looking for um, a place to live, live year round, or you just want to be able to fly in and feel like you're on vacation, then you can, I would definitely recommend looking into a resort style community. Um, pickleball, tennis, some of them along the coast have private beach access. They have concierge services to help you if you need a dog sitter or anything like that. And it varies by the community. You might have a community that just has a pool and tennis court. You might have one that has all of the things that you see listed. Um, most of these communities with all of the Uber amenities are going to be new construction communities um, um, or communities that just finished their new construction. But it's like um, the builders have this like, OK, I got to beat the next one or th with each community. They got to beat the next one in terms of having more opportunity and more um, more H more amenities for the community. So pickleball has become very popular. We even have communities with indoor pickleball and indoor tennis. So year round. Round, you can really enjoy that sport. Um, 55 and up communities. So we have we have all age communities, and then we have a 55 and up community, or I like to say 55 and better. <laughs> um, and so if you are wanting to be in a community with active adults, then there are some age restricted communities that we can definitely take a look at. Del Webb is a big brand in the area. They have some opportunities, but there's also some um, other communities that are um, built by other local regional builders that are age restricted as well. And I'd be happy to kind of walk through some different opportunities for you. One of the questions that was actually sent in before this webinar was if I'm in an, a, a 55 and up community, would I still be able to rent my house? And the answer is yes. Um, but just like I was explaining with other HOA communities, every community is a little bit different um, in terms of um, the restrictions for how the, what the term is and how many tenants you're allowed per year. Um, the, the tenant would have to be 55 and up, however. So, um, but the answer is yes, you can still rent your home out if you're not there or part-time of the year, um, if, you're, if you are in an active adult community. Golf. I know this is a big attraction to this area. We have so many golf options. Um, so I'll break them down to you just into these different types of categories. There are many public and municipal golf courses that if you just want to be able to 
you know, book a tea time and go play public golf anytime you can do that. And you don't have to be any part of spe any special club or anything like that. Um, if you really want to make it more of your lifestyle, there are private golf clubs, of course, that you can join. Um, and there are also private golf communities, which are where the golf course is only open to those that live in that community. Contrary to like a, a private club, it doesn't matter where you live, you can become a member of that club and then golf at, at their facilities. But there are many communities that you have to live in in order to enjoy the golf courses there unless you go with a, a, um, a, a homeowner in that community. And some of those communities have an option opportunity for you to be what's called a social member or a, or a golf member. So um, sometimes there's even specific homes that when you purchase that home, it comes with the golf full golf membership or it comes with the social membership. Social membership would mean that you have access to golf there, but only with, with restrictions and you would have to pay in a different way. Um, bundled golf would mean that you have unlimited access to play golf there and that's included in your homeowners association dues. So as a social member, you could still play in maybe the off season, or maybe you just get less preference in terms of tee times, but you would pay as you play. Um, and then you would have access in your, um, from your HOA dues as a social member to enjoy the pool and the spa and the fitness and all the other things. So if you are looking for a golf course community, um, again, I can help you kind of narrow down different options based off what your budget is and what, how much golf you want to um, play to really make sure it makes financial sense for you. Now there are many non-HOAs and I know we've talked a lot about the, the benefits of all the fun amenities and the restaurants and the things that happen in the, um, in the different communities, but non-HOAs have a lot of benefits too. Um, you know, of course, the first one being that there aren't those extra fees that you have to pay each month. Um, you get the extra added privacy typically in HOA communities, you're going to be, um, kind of, you're going to be pretty tight. You're going to be able to reach outside and you may be with a couple high fives, high five your neighbor. <laughs> um, so it is a little bit tighter there, but again, you're moving into a community to be part of the community. So you don't have as much privacy. If you want more privacy, I highly recommend looking outside of an HOA. Um, uh, you can store your boat or an RV on site if you have more property or not that regulation. You get more acreage, of course. You could do more of an Airbnb style rental if you wanted to do that. Um, less restricted recreation if you want to, you know, um, uh, archery or, uh, you know, fire some guns or whatever you want to do, you can do that and have more freedom to do that with noise and things like that. And of course, also farm animals. So if you have horses or if you want to have a chicken coop or something like that, those are some of the benefits of not having an HOA. Um, and there are many opportunities to get that in Southwest Florida as well. Housing options. So as you're searching, and I know different parts of the country call different types of homes different things. So I wanted to just give you a little um, overview of the language here. So the single family home, that is a standalone home like you see here, right here, um, that's unattached to anyone else. Um, even though it is a single family home in HOAs, a lot of the fees that you um, pay actually covers a lot of the maintenance of the exterior grounds of the home. So even though it is a single family home, you own the land, um, in an HOA, for example, they'll likely mow your lawn, do your weeding for you, um, exterior pest control, there'll be for security in the community. Um, they will um, uh, also wood chip um, and do a lot of the, the grounds maintenance that you might have to do up north. They'll take care of here, but you still have the luxury of having your own home and owning your property. Um, condos. So you might use condos and apartments interchangeably here. If you say apartment, somebody's probably thinking you're it's a rental property. Um, condos, um, I, there's really no difference in terms of what it is, it's, you know, a unit in a multiple multi-unit, um, uh, a high rise. Um, but it's really the same thing, but condos is something that somebody would purchase and a, um, an apartment would be something that somebody's just, just renting. Um, and, um, you will see there's, uh, low rise, mid rise and high rise. Low rise is typically four floors or under, um, lots of opportunities, especially in Naples for low rise condominiums. So you have a smaller community, um, mid rise is like four to 10, I believe. And then a high rise would be, um, higher than that. So that you will see some high rises, um, in Fort Myers, for example, 
Um, so that if you are searching and you see those different terms, that's what they're talking about. Townhomes are typically referring to two level homes, like you see here in the lower right hand corner. Um, so uh, townhomes typically going to have a gar attached garage with two levels there. Um, it may or may not have a garage, but it's going to be a two story home. If you're looking for a home that is what other, in other parts of the country they might call a duplex. We call these villas. Um, there might even be like a quadruplex or four of these together or even eight of them together, but villas um, have the feel inside of all on one level. You have your attached garage, um, but it is connected to another home. So there's what they call an attached villa, and that's the most um, popular kind of villa. Um, and then there's the detached villas, which really just means that the house is extra skinny and really close to the next one. <laughs> um, but it's like a single family home. It's just kind of on a smaller lot and much, much more scrunched in. So, um, but you will see the word villa um, thrown around and really they're talking about an attached home more than likely um, that's all on one level. So real quick, I wanted to uh, kind of take a little field trip here with you and take a look at some search tips. So when you are searching, and here I'm just on my website here, I'm gonna go cut ahead and click on search. I wanna show you some tips. So now that you have a familiar, um, that you're familiar with the areas and some of the housing options, you know kind of maybe where you wanna start narrowing your search to. And of course, of course I can help you a little bit um, with this as well, or a lot, but here is um, what the search page looks like. The easiest way, now that you're a little bit more familiar with this map in the area, you know, looking here all the way down from Naples, all the way up through to Sanibel here, we talked about Estero Bonita, is to do click on this um, box right here where it says draw. And you can really narrow in like, okay, she was talking about North Naples and um, kind of this Immokalee corridor here. So I kind of want to narrow in on this area. So you can highlight it that way. And this, um, this site has a lot more search um, capabilities to get more specific than you would in, for example, like a Zillow or something like that. Also, it's great because as you see properties, if you want to give them a heart, then they'll save them for you in your account. You can refer back to them and also notify me so I can get some more information. You can send me a question through here. So it's a really easy way to um, communicate. But then you're going to want to go over here to more filters. And this is where you can type in your minimum price point, maximum price point, bedrooms. These automatically are checked, but you want to, if you don't want land, you want to take that off. Multifamily is not talking about like a villa or anything like that. It's talking about if you were actually looking to buy like an entire apartment complex or multiple unit complex. So typically I would check off of that unless you're an investor, if you're just looking for condos. So just make sure that it's in black, the ones that you are looking for. You can also get very specific with um, property styles. If you only want something that is a, a one-story ranch, um, you can put that in there. That's a popular search. Um, you want to make sure you're only looking at properties that are actively on the market and not already pending or closed. Square footage, you can put an acreage year. If you're looking for almost new but not quite brand new homes, you can put kind of that the... the um, that the max year is 2020, for example, and then you'll find homes that are just within the last couple of years. This is a really fun area here. Here you can um, look specifically for fixer uppers if you're an investor or maybe newly built if you want a golf course property, if you're looking just for an active adult 55 and up area. Um, community. You can click that as well. Waterfront, uh, pool, these are all really popular. And then down here too, if you're looking for a bargain, um, here you can look at homes that were just reduced. Or if you want to exclude anything that is an HOA and you, you want to be in a non-HOA, you can click here to make sure you're only looking at homes that don't have HOA fees. Um, there's some other things here if you want to get specific with amenities. For example, a lot of people are saying, I definitely want a pickleball community. You can select pickleball here and make sure that it is a community with pickleball. Um, for boating, if you want to get more specific about having golf access, this is where you would do that. Um, pets, 
Most communities are going to allow pets. They'll just have a limit. Um, but this really comes into play more if you're looking for a rental. Um, rentals are a little bit more difficult to find pets. And then if you want to look for a specific word that's in the description, for example, for investors, a great one to type in here would be investor. Um, so in the description, a lot of times they'll say investor special, or you can type in fixer upper or renovation or redo or something like that. And um, type in some different keywords here and you'll see some um, uh, it will pinpoint some specific listings for you that way. All right, we're almost done guys, hang with me here. Gonna get into some financial stuff here with you now. So as you're looking at gated communities in homeowners associations in this area, not only do you want to take and consider what your payment would be for your principal interest taxes and insurance, um, but you are going to want to take into consideration what the homeowners association fee is. And I will warn you, if you are looking on Zillow, sometimes it is wrong or it is not there at all. So when you're looking at what your monthly payment would be on Zillow, um, don't necessarily take that as um, truth. Um, this is where I can come in and do all the research for you and get those numbers like, hey, if I was going to be renting this out? What are my restrictions? Um, so consider that there will be HOA fees. Typical HOA fees, I mean, it ranges dr dramatically. It can be anywhere from $300 a month. Um, it could be um, all the way up to $20,000 a year. And many of the condo communities in Naples on the water, you're going to be paying $20,000 a year just in HOA fees. So um, it really can range depending on what amenities, the location, and everything that's included with that. So um, reach out to me and I can help by just clicking those um, hearts. Um, I'll be able to dig up some more information for you and, and let you know. Um, insurance, we had, you know, insurance is a hot topic here. Um, two different kinds of insurance is your, your basic homeowner's insurance. Um, I wish I had some good news for you that rates are going down. I talked to my mortgage, um, uh, or my, my insurance guy just before this call today. Unfortunately, there's no indication that insurance rates are going to get any better. Um, uh, but I did have him run just a general payment. Of course, insurance is going to vary depending on, the age of the home and the condition and the location and so many different things, but give or take or so a $500,000 single family home that's new here with a new roof and everything like that, you're looking at about a $3,000 premium per year um, in this area. So give or take again, um, but just to give you guys kind of a range to consider when you're talking, when you're thinking homeowners insurance. Now, flood insurance is another thing. We do have many flood zones, but there are most of the areas I would say that are not in flood zones. So if you want to try to avoid being in a flood zone, which would has mandatory flood insurance, if you have a mortgage, you need to have flood insurance. Um, then, um, uh, that's something that I can definitely exclude in your search criteria as well. Um, some areas you'd be surprised, you would think it would have flood insurance mandatory mandated and it doesn't. And then on the flip side, sometimes you're like surprised that gosh, we're five miles from the beach. I can't believe that we have um, need flood insurance. Um, but um, I will say in the majority of the new construction communities, you do not need flood insurance um, because of the way everything's engineered and then the location as well. So I can help you through that if it's something you want to avoid. CDD. This is a new one for a lot of people. A CDD is a community development district. What this is, is the loan that builders take out from the government in order to develop the infrastructure for the community. And it's paid back by the homeowners over typically 30 years. So this can be an extra thousand to $2,000 per year, and it's paid in your tax bill. So something else to be um, aware of as you're looking at new construction communities Sometimes they won't have one and they will advertise no CDD. And that's a good thing. Um, so if you are kind of looking at all your different costs and just making sure that you're in alignment with what your budget is, it's not just about the price of the home. There's these other things that go into that. Now, I, I just kind of gave you the bad news, so I'm going to give you a little bit of good news. <laughs> if you are relocating to the area and you do have children K through 12, we have an incredible program here in Florida that's going to save, um, that can potentially save you a lot of money um, if you have a child that you want to attend a private institution. 
or if they need tutoring or anything extra like that. Um, basically, um, uh, you can apply for this and it is not needs based. Um, so I have several, several uh, families that I, I know of that send their kids to uh, private schools and have gotten up to $7,800 per year towards their tuition, which is a huge amount of money for private education. Basically, the government's able to allocate the money that they would be spending on that public school student and allow um, allot it to you on a private basis. So this is something that's very unique um, that Florida has for K-2 through 12 students. Also for students that need extra tutoring and things of that nature, the average award's up to $10,000. Um, so um, there's lots of additional um, uh, non-needs-based scholarships available for Florida residents here as well. Bright Futures is another big one. It allows high school students to qualify to get up to 100% of their college tuition paid for. Um, I know when I was up in Michigan, we were saving like crazy for college for our kids. Now we're just putting them in tutoring and hoping that they, they hoping that they get this scholarship. But this is also not needs based um, and very reasonable. Um, and there's different tiers. But if you want more information about the Bright Futures um, uh, program um, for um, uh, college tuition for high school students, then you go to this website here at the bottom. Tax advantages. Um, it might be new. I don't know, but we don't have any state income tax here. So I know we might pay a little bit more in insurance, but hey, no state income tax. So that is a huge benefit. Um, also with a homestead deduction, um, this is if you are a permanent resident here in um, in Florida and you you um, do that you file prior to January 1st for that year, you can get as much of a $50,000 um, value reduced from your property's taxable value. So um, that's definitely helpful. There's also something called Save Our Homes. So if you've been living here in Florida as a homestead residence, you can actually port over the savings that you've had from your previous home to your new home here. And so there are some really great programs to help keep taxes reasonable in this area. So I know we've covered a lot here today, but I wanted to kind of talk about what our next steps are. The next steps would be to scan this, um, this QR code on your screen. So if you have your cell phone, you can pull that out and you can literally just like go to your camera and hover over this like you're taking a picture and then you just push on it. There's like a little yellow box that opens up and then you can click on that. And what that's going to do is it's going to take you to um, a calendar link so that you can schedule a time to meet with me personally. Um, we can go over your specific situation, answer any additional questions that you might have and get started working together. What I'll do is do a concierge search for you. So once I understand more about what you're looking for, I'll um, start searching on my end. And instead of you, you know, getting a zillion emails from a zillion different people with a bunch of garbage that you have to sort through, I will personally review each listing before it's sent to you so that I know it's within the criteria you want. Sometimes it's the criteria. There's a lot of different criteria points there, but Maybe you're like, I only want a white kitchen. There's not like a criteria or point for that in an automatic search. Well, I can kind of vet, vet, vet those types of things for you and make sure you're only getting the, the best things with the best views or whatever is most important to you to really take a look at. And then you can sit back and know that somebody else has their eye on the market for you. Um, then the next step after that is once you narrow down kind of maybe the area or some of the homes that you're seeing that you really are excited, I definitely welcome you to make a trip down here. Um, unless you're one of those buyers that is okay buying online, most people make a trip down here. Let's spend a weekend together. We can run around, look at some different areas, look at some different homes so you feel more comfortable, even just check out the local restaurants and things of that nature. That's really what's going to make you feel like, okay, this is the right place for me to be long-term. Then we go to a contract, um, get your home under contract. Um, again, with new construction, if you're building from scratch, you're looking at 12 to 18 months or more in lead time. Um, so just so you have an idea, if you are looking for something sooner than that, you're probably going to be looking at more of a resale. Or sometimes there are speculative homes that are available now that fell out of contract with a new construction um, community that we can get you into right away. You just don't get to pick all the options and things like that. So so those are things we can talk through as well. We do your inspection, we do your appraisal, and then you move in at your close. 
So the last two resources I wanted to give you here are my partners in for financing and insurance, um, Jamie Hamilton and Joe Mangelo. Um, Jamie is with First Commonwealth Bank. What I love about Jamie is she is so patient, so kind, and she will walk you through all of your different options. She's been in the industry for many, many years, decades, and um, has seen it all. And so she will sit with you patiently, even if she doesn't feel like she can help you with business. She will still give you advice, whether it's a reverse mortgage or um, a bridge loan or any of the different products that are out there. She'll really walk you through all of your different options. She's not just going to say, hey, here's the 30-year fixed rate. Do you want it or not? Um, she'll really run some different scenarios for you and hold your hand throughout the entire process. Um, Jamie is actually originally from Pittsburgh and now lives down here full time. Um, on the right there is Joe Mangelo. He, I was teasing Joe before this webinar. He's about 15 years older than this picture. I know he looks like a baby here, um, but Joe is amazing. He is with Florida Cosmetic Insurance and he is originally from Connecticut. He has a great perspective on how different Florida insurance is than any of the Northern states. It is extremely complex. There are things that you know, you might be able to, you might call Allstate or some of these other insurance places, and they're just going to give you um, a, a policy, but you have no idea what you're covered for. He will take the time to go through that in detail and make sure you have the coverage that you need. It's not just about the lowest price. It's about what you're getting for that coverage. And so he'll really take the time to walk through all of that for you. So those are their numbers. If you want to reach out to them, let them know I sent you. They're both very good friends of mine. And we call ourselves the dream team, the three of us, because um, we take care of our customers and make deals happen for them. Um, we fight fires behind the scenes, things that you don't even need to know because we make them go away before um, they become an issue. So that's that's the team here that I work with. So that is it, you guys. If you want to start your search and that website that I showed you earlier, just kind of playing around, looking at some different opportunities, you can scan this code here and it'll take you to that search. But it was a pleasure uh, sharing this information with you today. I hope I educated you and gave you a good kind of overview and landscape of the area and what is available in this area um, for you, the options that you have, financial considerations, um, and kind of helped you dream a little bit about what's possible here in Southwest Florida. 